Tanya was getting her care with um, another member of my team. And she described coming back from vacation and described symptoms that can be concerning for heart failure or heart changes in pregnancy. And I had just mentioned it like, oh yeah, I'm just having some trouble breathing. And they were like, well, is it just when you're moving around and walking or is it at other times? And I was like, well, no, it's kind of all the time. Like I can sit down and be having trouble breathing, especially when I lay flat, I can't lay flat on my back. My partner had very thoughtfully gotten a cardiac echo. And when I saw changes in the right heart, I was very concerned. I met Tanya when she was 32 weeks pregnant. She had had an ultrasound of her heart prior to seeing me, which showed that her right ventricle of her heart was slightly enlarged and was not squeezing like it should. They called me and they told me that there were some abnormal abnormalities in the right side of my heart and um, that they wanted to see me. So after I reviewed the echo, I met with Tanya and recommended that we go to the Women's Heart and Health Clinic. The Women's Heart and Health Clinic was a fantastic idea from our cardiology colleagues. It's great because in the past we were working separately. We can look at a patient together and say, this makes me concerned and I can hear from my cardiology colleagues what would make them concerned. Now a patient can see both of us at the same time and we can look over objective testing together and I feel like it it's a much better situation for women who are pregnant and dealing with heart disease. I remember sitting in the room and they're like, we're gonna go discuss this and we'll come back. It appeared that she was retaining some water, some fluid, and at that time felt that she needed to have further testing. We ended up referring her for what we call a heart catheterization. They told me I needed a heart catheterization and that was really hard for me. And from that time frame forward, I was able to know that for, for a number of different reasons, Tanya's body was holding onto way more fluid than the average patient does in pregnancy. It can be common in pregnancy for the heart rate to increase from what you usually are. We know when women who are pregnant have severely elevated pressures in their heart, that can be very dangerous. We also know that the United States has the highest rate of maternal mortality of any developed country in the entire world. Dr. Chris Nelson told me that she wanted to admit me a few days prior to my delivery just to do some IV. Working to decrease this fluid so that that stressful period right after birth could be decreased for her heart. And it worked. It went really well. That was definitely the best decision because it definitely made my delivery a lot more smooth and safe for me and baby. Pregnancy heart care is a team sport. We need each other. Uh, I could never have provided Tanya the care that she needed without my colleagues in cardiology, nursing, OB anesthesia. We work together to be able to provide what our patients ultimately need. Listen to your doctors. If they tell you that they want you to get an EKG or an echocardiogram or a catheterization, that you do that because they're not just suggesting it just to suggest it. There's a reason behind I love Dr. Quist Nelson and Dr. Lewis. I'm just so thankful to have a healthy baby um, due to the great care that I've received. We are both very healthy and happy. <laughs> <laughs>